Well, the NBA playoffs are underway, and like the NHL, there have been some surprises during first-round action. No surprises in the Boston Celtics-Chicago Bulls series. The Celts took a two-games-to-none lead today, but they had their hands full doing it. The stubborn Bulls taking the Celts into double overtime with Air Jordan, Michael Jordan, putting on a dazzling record performance. 63 playoff points for Michael Jordan today. But the Chicago Bulls come up empty, 135-131 in double overtime. Boston leads the series to zip. The Philadelphia 76ers have bounced back in their series with the Washington Bullets. The Sixers tying up the best of five at one game apiece with a 102-97 victory. The Portland Trailblazers are even up with the Denver Nuggets in their first rounder. The Blazers taking game two, 108 to 106. The Milwaukee Bucks bucking the New Jersey Nets 111 to 97. They have a 2-0 lead in that series. And the Utah Jazz losing again to the Dallas Mavs. The Jazz down two games to none in that preliminary round series. You know, there's an unwritten rule in boxing that says in order to win a world championship, you have to pummel the defending champion into submission or knock him out. That certainly was the case last night in Las Vegas as Larry Holmes sought to reclaim his heavyweight championship, which he had lost to the much lighter Michael Spinks. Holmes fought a much better fight this time around, but his vindication in Vegas did not materialize as Spinks took a split decision that in the eyes of many should have gone the other way. Early this morning and several hours after the fight, Larry Holmes invited reporters into his room and revealed that he had indeed broken his thumb in the third round of his fight with Michael Spinks. He said it didn't affect his performance. But after losing a split decision to Spinks, Holmes' spirit and heart hurt much more than his thumb. Was he a victim of bad scoring? Apparently, judges Frank Brunette and Joe Cortez saw two different fights. Each had it 144-141. Brunette saw it in favor of Spinks, while Cortez gave it to Holmes. Judge Jerry Roth had the fight closer and scored at 144-142 Spinks. I never thought I would get the decision if it went 15 rounds. I made the statement before that um, the guy asked me what I got to do to win, and I never called a name. I said, I got to knock him out. I said, because some of these judges got lying eyes. And as Larry know, Larry been here for years. He had mo the majority of his title fights here. And as he know, he's, he, have, he has pulled out a lot of close decisions here, and one every last one of them. I can, I can surely say from the time I, I set foot in Nevada, started, started fighting here in 77, right after the Olympics, and I always have known, to be, known them to be a very strict commission, to favor nobody, to deal with everyone fair and square. Holmes definitely connected with the bigger punches throughout the bout, and in the 14th round, he staggered Spinks, but was unable to find the reserves to put him away. But while Holmes threw 44 more punches during the fight, he connected on three less than Spinks. After the fight, Holmes said he cried, tearful because of the way he lost on a night that his career would end, on a night that he wasn't fighting for his future, but fighting to preserve his past. I'll never forget, they told me if I lose the fight, I'll be like a needle in a haystack. Hard to find. <laughs> be like a needle in a haystack. <laughs> History may be kinder to Larry Holmes, but a lot of his recent problems have been self-imposed. Holmes admitted that he has a big mouth, and certainly that didn't help his chances, as before the fight he made some statements about some of the Nevada State boxing officials. I learned that I have to knock him out. I learned that I can't take chances. I learned that there's such thing as fairness. I learned that these guys get drunk when they go to judge fights. I learned that people get paid off. I learned that I must win by knockout. I apologize, but I really didn't apologize because I had everybody in the world watching the fight and they seen what I was saying is true. Uh, I mean, damn it, if, if I lost the fight, you know, let it be, man. I, I'm not worrying about it. But if I won it, you know, the people know it, you know, people know it. They saw it, the ones that saw it, they, they saw it. I won it, fair and square. In an exclusive interview, International Boxing Federation President Robert Lee said that the judges picked for this fight were of the highest integrity and that no pre-fight comments by any fighter could alter their objectivity. These men are not going to put their, their character on the line and they're not going to put their, their integrity on the line because of some statements that someone makes uh, prior to a fight. There will be differences of opinion in boxing. This is the only sport that's when it's over. There's somebody that disagrees. The judges sat down, they judged, and I certainly can't get in their heads and make them change a decision one way or the other. But 
Manitoba divers made quite the splash as the Western Canadian Diving Championships wrapped up today at the Pan Am Pool. Some extremely talented young board lovers took the plunge and came up smiling. The best age group divers in Western Canada were pooled together for the meet, and Winnipeg's Pan Am Diving Club emerged as the top team in the three-day event. The Manitoba Provincial team had several standout performances. In the girls 12 and under, it was Marnie de Riker taking three golds, the one meter, three meter, and the tower event. In the 13 and 14-year-old category, Kelly Bruman of Thunder Bay also captured three golds. In the 15 to 17-year-old division, Winnipeg's Jennifer McCartan was denied a third gold in the tower event, finishing second to Heather Pinio of Calgary, but she still collected two golds, a silver and a bronze in the competition. The bronze coming in the women's open where Robin Whitmire of the Manitoba team took first place. In the boys age group, it was a case of one diver taking home most of the bacon. Jeff Bacon, in fact. The Saskatoon-born member of the Pan Am Diving Club won six golds in all. Two in the final day of the competition in the 15 to 17-year-old Tower and the Men's Open Division. The Manitoba team now gears up for the age group Canadian Championship set for May in Toronto and the senior championships which will be held in Calgary in June. And finally tonight, it was the Battle of the Curling Sexes Part 2 in Newmarket, Ontario today. After learning a lesson from Ed Wernick last month in the much-publicized heart-to-heart challenge, Marilyn Dart and her rank tried again, but this time her opposition came from Ed Lukowicz and his world champion foursome. Well, ladies, we're sorry to report it's 2-0 for the men. Lukowicz won today by a score of 11-5. That's CKY Sports Fun Day, Sunday rather, and Fun Day for this Sunday. We'll hope you join us again next week.